do I could do on my own power, right? My mom, you know, always encouraged me that if I need if something's worth doing, it's worth doing darn right. Um, and you know, I would get up early, make lunch for me and my sister, make my own breakfast uh, for me and my sister, all that kind of stuff. And like my entire upbringing was really wiring me to understand that. You know, it's all about me, it's what I can do with my own power, what I can do you know, to accomplish A, B, C, D. Um, and if things don't turn out right, well that's just because I didn't try hard enough, I wasn't you know, skilled enough, I didn't really care about it enough. Um, so that's you know, my mindset coming here uh, to Cornell. I came uh, very much set that you know, like, uh, religion, it was great, uh, but if you were to ask the freshman me, what was religion? Religion was an emotional crutch for those that just weren't strong, for those that just were weak, because, you know, that's all religion really served, to make you feel a little bit about yourself, better about yourself, when things weren't going so well. Um, that's really interesting. Uh, I was in a sweet freshman year with uh, five Chinese guys and a white guy named Gary Rosenblatt. <laughs> and Zach Wu, my roommate, four years. That's been crazy. Um, and just so you guys know, coming into Cornell, I like, knew like two Christian songs because like my two best friends in high school were like Christian, and they were cool people, which is why like you know Christians were cool, whatever. Um, but uh, I walked by, and apparently uh, Gary was playing a song, and he was kind of praying like, "Oh, you know, God, if, if anyone recognizes this song, um, I really want to witness to them, evangelize them, reach out to them, you know, stuff like that." Um, I, of course, I never found out about this until much later, uh, but I happened to walk by, and I hear. The Answer by Shane and Shane, which is one of the few songs I actually knew. So we start talking, uh, it comes up that you know, he's Christian, he's going to check out the fellowships. He invites our entire suite to come along, uh, blah, blah, blah. I'm in AIV. Um, and if you guys, <laughs> I kind of just like tagged along. And uh, we checked out AIV and CBS, and eventually Gary chose AIV. I don't really know why, uh, but I chose AIV because Gary was in AIV. And like, I didn't want to go, like, especially all the way to Phillips. It's kind of far away. Uh, but, CBS is great. Um, so I think there's a lot that happened that first and second semester. Um, and if you guys uh, want to know more about that, I encourage you to come ask me about it, about why I saw the need for a savior you know, when I was perfectly capable on my own power. Um, but I kind of wanted to move forward a little bit because um, a lot of my testimony as a young Christian has happened here at Cornell. Uh, through Asian American University, through the ways I've served. So, you were to, so someone actually did ask the freshman to me, Audrey Catch, who's an alumni, she asked me uh, how might I want to serve at the end of my freshman year. You know, we were just like grabbing lunch and um, she wants to touch base with me. You know, a very new Christian, been Christian for like a couple months. I was like, um, I think that at most I'd like to be a small group leader senior year. Um, and that was, even that was like a maybe, I was like, nah. I don't want to do anything else. Like I got all this medical school stuff, medical school school stuff to figure out. I've got you know like I have no idea what I'm doing as a Christian. No idea you know what the Bible even says other than like Jesus loves me, and even that like is like you know wasn't a complete answer. Um, so fast forward a few months, and I was events coordinator. Fast forward a few more months, and I was president, as I hear as I am here now. Um, and I wanted to share a verse with you guys. It's from First Timothy. 3, uh, 13, uh, for those who serve gain great standing and great assurance in their faith in Christ Jesus. A little bit of context, this is talking about deacons and overseers and things like that, but I think just that model I've really seen come to play of those who serve really do gain great assurance in their faith in Christ Jesus. You know, you look at the Old Testament, at these people like Moses or like one of the, one of the judges like Gideon, and you know, these people like said like no God like I, I, I don't I can't do it like I'm not you know and Moses like I can't speak and Gideon was like you know I'm from this like really lowly tribe of Manasseh whatever like I, I, there's no way I can like you know Moses no Moses is like no way I can like lead the people out of Egypt um, Gideon's like no way I can uh, be raised up as a judge but I think what you see in those Old Testament stories and what I've really seen uh, from those who serve so that's absolutely right that on your own power. There is nothing that you are really, you know, capable of. Like, if you ask me, am I ready to be president of Asian American University? My honest answer would be, on my own power, no. That's kind of scary because, you know, it's been a year. Um, <laughs> but I think, in all honesty, 
I see time and time again things on the very brink of like completely falling through, like bubble tea that almost didn't happen by the very last second, it pulls through. Um, and you see time and time again that God gives you just enough for those that serve, for those that lead. Kind of as a gentle reminder that no, it's not, it's not you, it's, it's, it's me. It's kind of cute that you think it's you. Um, and so my encouragement to you guys is twofold, I think, on one end, right, that the Bible tells us that we as leaders will be judged more harshly, that we should you know, be very careful about when we step into positions of leadership, when we decide we want to serve, just in general. We want to make sure we're going in with one, the right heart, and two, with an earnest commitment to do the things that you know, need to happen, with the spiritual disciplines, with the component of making sure that you have good daily quiet times, that you're learning about who God is, and you're being able to connect with Him on a spiritual level. But on another level, right, that you're never going to be ready enough, and so at some point you do have to take that step of faith. At some point you do have to really just understand your own brokenness, and that it really is 100% God. And I think if I, you know, if I would pray that my example, I guess we might call it, of what I've been the past few years, if I could you know, say one thing, what I'd want it to be to you guys is that all falls short of the glory of God. That I, you know, I know like even this past Friday night, the words I said, some of them somehow came out the opposite of what I was actually trying to say. Like, that at every point, and you can feel free to ask me about that later, but at every point along the way I've seen that you know, no matter how mature or like grown up or like you know, spiritual holy I feel like I am at times, no, I'm still a broken sinner in need of a savior. Um, and so that is my invitation to you guys. We're going to transition a little bit along the topic of leadership to the installation of the new exec team. Um, so I'm gonna call my uh, old exec team to come up here to my left. Uh, this includes anyone that's gonna be serving a second time. Uh, so come on up, if you guys wanna give them a round of applause. That includes you, Chen. This is the old team. So I'm gonna do it. So I think the first thing I wanna do is thank these people from the bottom of my heart for, <laughs> for putting up with me for the past year as president. Especially Joyce Lee, who if you don't know, was my co-events coordinator and then small group coordinator with me while I was president. She's seen a lot of my face over the past couple years, um, probably much more than she'd like to. Um, but I think, you know, in all honesty, this position, these positions are not glamorous, they're hard, at times it requires sacrifice because you know, when you have schoolwork to think about and then you have to worry about, oh shoot, what are we gonna do for a large group? What are we gonna do for worship? What are we gonna do for money? What are we gonna do in small groups? It requires a lot of sacrifice that, you know, goes unthanked most of the time. So uh, I just really wanna thank them for everything that they've done. I would now like to invite the new exec team on my right, and for those that are gonna be on the new exec team, if you wanna you know, unawkwardly go to the right, and then everyone else can scoot to the left to give them some room. And we can give them a round of applause too, I guess, like, you know. They're pretty cool people, I think. I guess I was thinking 